How about that cigar? How about that cigar? Well, uh, it's our favorite night of the week. It's Tuesday. Boom. And welcome to episode 24. 24. How about that cigar? And thanks for uh, reading and visiting HowAboutThatCigar.com. Thank you for listening to the audio podcast. And thank mm -hmm. you for watching us live on Facebook. Um, yep. So this evening, uh, we're, it's a little bit impromptu. We're changing things up a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about that in, in a few minutes when we get started. But uh, um, let's talk about uh, our favorite subject of the week. Actually, it's becoming, again, our favorite subject, <laughs> the Minnesota Twins. Yeah, I got a little rough there for a minute. There was yeah. some uh, very classic Minnesota things happening. Uh, but, yeah, we are now up uh, five and a half. Um, and it actually looks like Cleveland, Cleveland might even... Uh, miss out on the wild card race yeah all together yeah. which in, in my opinion would be a little sad because of how hard they fought back oh yeah to get so close yeah i think they deserve to be in the playoffs they've they've been playing overall i mean they've had their spots but overall they've been playing extremely good baseball for the last yeah four weeks five weeks. and if they were in the other league in any other division they would be going to the playoffs. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So thank you guys for watching. Um, please yeah. uh, continue to leave comments, questions. Um, so basically, what happened tonight is um, we had scheduled uh, Mr. Jeff Borshowitz from Corona Cigar Company and Florida Sun Grown Tobacco, mm -hmm. and obviously Florida um, has so a, there's something going on there. There's something going on in Florida, um, well, and it's actually not going on in Florida, but it's on its way to Florida. It, it is, uh, but it's going at a snail's pace. Yep. So this uh, Hurricane Dorian hit uh, the Bahamas really hard, and uh, is uh, as far as I know that it's still tracking its way toward Florida, but. Uh, I don't know where it's going to land. Nobody really does. It's going to land where it's going to land, but it's moving extremely slow. You got no sound. Well, uh, hey guys, if you can't can if you can't hear us, yeah. tell us that you can't hear us. Confirm, uh, confirm. Yeah, we need a confirmation from, from a few more Todd saying about, he can't hear us. About so sound. Let us know if that's the case. Big Bear, do you got sound, Chuck? Okay, so Big Bear's got sound. Okay, uh, Todd, you might just want to check the volume on your device. So. Uh, um, you might want to turn it off and then turn it back on again. <laughs> IT crowd. IT crowd. Little reboot. Never heard anybody. I rebooted just before we started this broadcast. You did. Uh, so anyway, Mr. Uh, Jeff Borshowitz um, was scheduled to be our guest on the show tonight. Uh, but, of course, there's so many things going on in Florida right now. Um, they have all the Corona Cigar Company locations closed right now. Um, they're... Uh, and services and, and availability of, you know, things, even just like gasoline, you just, mm -hmm. you, you can't get it. So, um, we spoke on the phone just a little while ago and we're going to reschedule and we officially have a new date on the calendar for September 24th. So when, uh, September 24th rolls around, we will have Mr. Jeff Borshowitz live on how about that cigar? Awesome. And, uh, you know, it seems uh, a little trivial when when people say this, but uh, truly when things like this are going on, if you are the praying type, uh, just offer up, you know, a few uh, for those who are going through this. Um, obviously, we see plenty of reports of those who do not uh, heed the warnings of officials and try and stick it out and yeah. You know how that turns out. So just uh, just be in prayer for those if if uh, that's your deal. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, in talking to Jeff, it's possible that this could turn out to be nothing. Right. Um. At least for I, I'm sorry, it should it could turn out to be nothing for the state of Florida, but we still just don't really the Bahamas. know. Bahamas. Uh, the Bahamas got hammered. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I mean, they've already been affected by it, and and honestly, guys, that's already an area of the of the globe that is, you know that that really struggles with poverty and lack of resources so um if you know of any organizations that that give aid you know to areas like that um uh even um red cross you know red cross or missions organizations or whatever it is you know honestly even if you take five bucks out of your pocket it'll help in some way shape or form yeah so uh you know just help when you can uh, and like garrett said if you're you know if, if prayer is your thing and it is mine and, and it is Garrett's as well, then, you know, say a prayer and, you know, um, 
you know, just ask God to, you know, do what he's going to do to take care of them. So, um, yeah, we had to reschedule with Jeff. Uh, but again, it's like Garrett said, it's a trivial thing. It's a cigar show, but we want to have fun tonight yeah. still. And we want to, you know, um, we want to keep going with this thing. Um, we had a great guest on the show last week. We had Skip Martin. Skip, oh, that's yeah. what that was. <laughs> Skip Martin. Um, and it was it was great because um, it was by leaps and bounds um, our most viewed and most listened to episode of all time. I mean, not even close. Not even. Um, and we we've had all of the other ones. And we've had wonderful guests, um, but Skip draws a crowd. He does because um, mm. Skip's knowledgeable and he he is controversial. Although I don't I don't really. A lot of people think Skip's controversial. I don't really. I just think he speaks his mind. Yep. Um, he's uh, not afraid. You know, he's not afraid to speak his mind. Yeah. Um, and he's hot. Did you? Uh, nope. No. Mm -mm. You're not. You're just. No. Nope. We're gonna leave that right there. We're just gonna go right past <laughs> that. Um, but we wanted to, uh, we still wanted to do a show tonight. I, I actually, Garrett was the one that encouraged me. He's like, we still have to do a show. I was like, I don't want to do a show. I was all mopey and he was, but, um, so Garrett brought me a lovely gift, uh, indeed brewing company. Uh, you can't see the label cause I got it in my custom, uh, can koozie, but, uh, indeed brewing company, uh, out of Minneapolis. This is the Mexican honey lager. Yeah. And I'm going to try it right now. I can't. Uh, so I've been sober 24 years, so I live vicariously through uh, a lot of other people in in beverages. Um, so I enjoy, you know, picking up a thing, you know, thing or two here and there and giving them out and saying, here, um, they said this was good. That is good. Yeah. It's so I was worried when it said honey on the label, it was going to be sweet, but it's not sweet. Oh, cool. But it tastes like it's got that earthy kind of uh, floral quality you get from honey. Awesome. And it's good. It's, you know, it's a good, uh, it's a good quality uh, beer either way. But yeah, it's good. Awesome. So yeah, we wanted to uh, still have a show tonight and talk to you guys about a few things. What we're kind of going to do is we're, we're going to, uh, in a little bit, we're sort of going to pose some questions to each other that we normally pose to our guests. Yeah. Um, uh, but before that happens, um, we're going to do a little, uh, a little fun, something or other, um, Garrett and I each picked out a cigar that was roughly the same size and took the bands off. I've got the band for the cigar in my pocket right here. Garrett has no idea what the cigar is. Garrett took the band off this cigar. I have no idea what it is. And this is sort of an homage going back to, um, when, when I was with blind man's puff, uh, it's just fun sometimes to to smoke a cigar without a band on it and then find out after the fact what it was. Yep. Uh, it's sort of, uh, it's just fun. You it know, is, it gives you a you chance to it. really, really sort of uh, taste and smell what's going on with a cigar mm -hmm. and you don't have any preconceived notions about what, exactly. it, what it may or may not be. Yeah. Yep. So let's do the old switcheroo. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Yes. We totally measured sticks. And this. Uh, Compared sticks. This cigar I'm going to dump because I'm done with it. Um, I don't, I, I, I won't even mention who it was uh, that I was smoking earlier. And this has been one of those days for me. This is, uh, and I'm, uh, this is my excuse cone <laughs> moment. Uh, this is cigar number eight for me. So there's my excuse for the day. And this is a nice, um, sort of medium Brown color. The one that Garrett gave to me, it's a Lonsdale sort of size, uh, maybe a 44 by six six and a quarter ish um yeah and maybe a corona maybe a corona gorda that's a 46 that's definitely a 46 yep um and it's got a little <clears throat> pigtail on it mine does um um garrett what about the one i gave to you it was triple cap uh gorgeous triple cap so that means that we're talking about some serious hardware typically um the the wrap is beautiful, nice dark chocolatey wrapper. Um, actually, all of the filler and the binder are dark as well. So I'm thinking I'm about to get hammered if I was judging this book by its cover, which we all know can be completely wrong. It can be a misnomer that, 
all of this this darkness is going to translate into strengths. But yeah, so as you guys see, I'm actually shoving this cigar not inside my nose, but pretty much right up on it because I want to get really get the foot there. Um, this it's earthy and it's grassy and peppery. You know, sort of like you know, like my neighbor just cut his grass and uh, you know fresh ground pepper you know that you just put on a steak kind of thing uh it's sort of a like i said medium brown not super toothy kind of sandy um really smooth uh it's a really well rolled cigar as far as i can tell it's got a few bumps on it but nothing terrible it's not rustic i wouldn't call it rustic in appearance mm -mm. um i almost look i can't tell if it's habano or sumatra i'm still i'm still working on on identifying just by sight the different tobacco leaves it's going to take me forever to really get that down but um yeah oh, this one's nicely rolled dirty little bastard <laughs> garrett's already talking dirty to a cigar mm. so i'm going to toast this thing up garrett's garrett's ahead of me i am i was always. excited to, to to get into this uh appreciate the the love brothers uh big bear all i gotta say is that cinco five was dynamite that single five that single vegas single five the yeah. five five the five five yeah <laughs> uh so funny story um each year a good friend of ours tim tubbs hosts a um uh dog rocket herf and <clears throat> went to the first first one uh he did two years ago i wasn't able to make this last one but um it's a blind you know blind uh dog rockets and you're getting you know majority dog rockets but thrown into the mix are some you know some king shit stuff yeah and i got this cigar and i tell you what you guys and it wasn't only me that looked at the wrapper and um, looked at the way that this thing was rolled and was burning and the flavors were actually pretty, pretty on point. And I was like, man, this thing is great. It's smoking like a Cuban. And then after that, there was no playing down what was going to ensue. Well, it's yeah. Cause you're sitting there smoking a bunch of blind cigars. It's just cigars with bands with yep. a, a three digit number or a two digit number on yep. it. Yep. And you just gotta, you just gotta let the chips fall where they may, and just be honest. And mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you end up looking like a chump, and sometimes you end up looking like a hero. But yeah, so apparently I had a Cuban Cinco Vegas. That's cool. I didn't know that the that any of the factories in Cuba made the mm, the Cinco Vegas. They, yeah, they don't. It's really <laughs> super weird thing that happened. But uh, you were you were pretty much dead convinced that that was a Cuban cigar. I wasn't dead convinced that it was Cuban, but I was. Uh, it, it was a good. It was a great cigar. Um, for everything else, the the two previous cigars that I'd had were definitely nasty, gross. You know. Yeah. Uh, gross ones, um, and that one was just far and away so much better in so many different ways. So. Well, I have great. to. I have to say, yeah. and I think for for uh, to protect the innocent i won't divulge his name but at the most re there's a funny story from the most recent dog rocket hearth very funny mm. story and you know yeah so somebody somebody that we know very well and i i will leave his name out of it uh to, to protect him from the ire but he's he's laughed it off pretty well he's taking it like a champ yeah so uh at the last dog rocket hearth um this guy gets a uh, cigar number, I don't know, 30 something. And he lights it up and they're sitting, they're all sitting around a campfire and, or a fire pit in uh, somebody's yard. And he gets this cigar and he lights it up. And I think if I, I wasn't there, but this is all from what I was told in the posts I saw on the, on Facebook, he lights up this cigar and he gets about maybe a half inch into it. And he chucks it, and I mean, he commits. Right. So I give him this. He committed. He's yeah. like, he he didn't him and haw about it. He grabbed that cigar and he chucked it in the fire pit. And it was a uh, it was a Fuente Don Arturo Don Arturo anniversario. Yeah, yeah. So like a what thirty dollar cigar? 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He chucked it right in the fire pit. So I, uh, I gotta say, although I, 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 I gotta hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We gotta throw that on the screen. Big Bear's gotta, gotta, uh, gotta, uh, call out the, uh, but you know, and that, that goes to show something too, because, uh, I remember the first year, um, it was Buck Saunders who smoked, and he actually, I want to say, was a third into the cigar before he was like, you know, I'm just not having this. And um, he didn't chuck his into the fire. What he did, he did one better, and he unrolled it. Oh, really? Yeah, to see okay. if it was even long filler yeah. in the cigar. Like, he was so convinced that it was a rocket that yeah. he unrolled it and um that turned takes, out to be it takes balls that turned out to be like a i want to say an og frank oh <laughs> those are like i mean those are seriously like like unicorns there's oh yeah there's very few you know og franks left yeah. in the world so yeah that was uh, so you know two years in a row we've had both king stuff Oh, it was a Drac. Well, same thing. A dra- okay. I mean, Still a OG great, drac. great cigar. Yeah. Full size OG Drac. That's good stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I dig the fact that, uh, that since his name's out there now, big pickle, I, I, I dig the fact that he, he committed, man. Mm-hmm. He grabbed that cigar and, and half inch in, and he just chucked it right in the fire pit. And, uh, you know, he was like, I'll take, I'll take whatever comes, you know, if I look like a chump, so be it. Um, I want to take a second, if I can. Do it. Um, so a few of you guys know that, um, what, a month and a half ago, Matt and I took a trip down to Kentucky, Ohio. West Virginia. West Virginia area, this little this little nook. And uh, we visited uh, Tom Folks and uh, Dwayne at the fat ash dwight. cigar dwight dwight Schrute. it's all dwight, good dwight Schrute. dwight <laughs> um and th- their shop is amazing yeah it's um, a great place the, the hospitality that we received on there was nothing short of awesome um and one of the coolest things that i saw down there w- were these custom boxes that they were making so it's like an ammo box but um, I don't know if you could see that light. That is actually uh, motion. So, so it's triggered by opening the lid. Yep, it's triggered by opening the lid. And they also put uh, a hydrometer and temp gauge in there. And they custom make these boxes. Uh, I just talked to Tom tonight, and he said that they just made 20 more. Um, if you are interested in one of these, it is. Um, I've been using this this week. It's yeah. the first time I, I decided to uh, throw some cigars in there and use it as my travel humidor for the week. And I love it. Um, there are, you know, two kinds, the one with the, uh, light and the wrapped handle are thirty nine ninety nine. without the light and the wrapped handle, they're twenty nine ninety nine, and he will ship them to you. So if you're interested in, and in want one of these, and I highly recommend him. He's not a sponsor. I'm just telling you about a product that I found that I love and that I, I'm a little sad that I wasted so much time not <laughs> using that because. Yeah, let me see that. Yeah, dude, it is. Because uh, these, I mean, it's lightweight. Because we all, we all carry around something like this. When we go to Herf's, when we go to the, um, even just go to the cigar shop, you know, to bring sticks home after we buy them. We bring something like this with us. But this thing, it'll carry a lot of cigars. Uh, it's got a high, it's got a digital hygrometer built right in for 40 bucks. It's the handles wrapped with, with legit par- paracord, like actual paracord. Yeah. Um, in case you get caught in the zombie apocalypse and need to, uh, you know, make a snare to, uh, you know, catch a snipe if you're hungry. Yeah. Um, Great. and it's just, it's yeah, this led light is just ridiculous, you know, and it's, it's got room for, there's room in there for plenty of cigars. I mean, Garrett's got quite a few sticks in there and there's still, there's got to be room in here for another 15 cigars at least. And it's a good seal. 
Yeah, um, I've had one package. These in there. ammo boxes have that have that yeah. O ring in there. Yep. So tight seal. It's uh, it's yeah, it's just great. So Survivador, there's the there's yep. their uh, their sticker right there, Survivador. So if you want one, uh, so. reach out to either Matt or I, and we will get you uh, Tom's contact information yeah. or that's how legit to, how to get one. I just wanted to rep a, a good good product uh, made by good people and uh, something that I've been enjoy using this last week. So right off the bat, I think I know what the wrapper on this cigar is. Um, I'm not going to say it yet until we get to the end, but I think I know what the wrapper is um, based on the flavor and the aroma. Uh, it's burning really well. There's a nice um, there's a nice ash on there, as you can see. Uh, for those of you watching, um, it's there's tons of smoke output. The draw is great. Um, there's just the slightest bit of resistance on the draw, and it's got nice sweetness in the flavors. There's there's just a tiny little bit of spice, but it's really subtle and only in the background. There's not much spice there, but there's sweetness and a little bit of earthiness. So uh, I'm loving it. What about you? Uh, real quick, I just want to say thanks, Guzman. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for tagging, Tom. Um, this. Thanks, Joe. Uh, can I just ask this? Is this old? It, it's, uh, it's, it's not super old. It's, uh, I bought it a little over a year ago. So it's been in my humidor a little over a year. It, um, it, it has just that characteristic of a cigar that's been sitting for a while and aged well. Um, that's why I asked that, um, there is just a slight spice that comes across on the finish. Um, the draw is perfect. The, uh, the smoke output is great and the flavors are stupid. <laughs> I can't put stupid my finger. Good. On, yeah. Stupid. Good. I can't put my finger on it yet, but we're going to keep rocking. Joe says that he has a sweet brown stick for you. <laughs> he's getting excited he's getting excited uh risty last week you said black was slimming so i wore black for you <laughs> oh so yeah guys um just to recap for those of you who are joining us who thought that we were going to have jeff borshowitz on the show tonight um we we uh we greatly appreciate jeff getting a hold of us and letting us know that just with everything going on in florida right now uh, the possibility of a hurricane uh, coming their way. Um, uh, we rescheduled. So on uh, September 24th, we uh, will have Jeff on the show. Um, and so uh, we want to thank him for uh, for everything he does for the cigar industry and wish everybody well in Florida who is, uh, uh, you know, battening down the hatches and, you know, any other pirate terms you can think of. <laughs> <laughs> hey pickle how's it going how's it going big pickle i love you brother i love you uh, i'm gonna for, for those listening on the audio podcast uh pickle just joined our live show with smh smh is that uh that's uh, um swing my hips <laughs> that's what it is swing my hips yeah, the new uh, hit song. <laughs> Sorry, we got bugs like legit crazy it, all over the place. It is a little Alfred Hitchcock in here. I gotta right stop now. using the word legit, or I'm gonna have to put on really big pillowy pants. You know, like no, they're tight now. Or are they yeah. no, but back in the day when he sang too, oh, when he did when he rapped too, too legit, legit. Yeah, I, I gotta I gotta I get got, the big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to have those pants. Back did you? Oh, it was it was bad. I gotta look for pictures. It was bad. <clears throat> All right, so um, we are going to go through a few of the questions we typically ask our guests each week, and um, we would like to have you guys chime in on on uh, the questions as well. Yeah, hundred percent. And it, and if you have additional questions, uh, anything you want to know, even if it's uh, you know something I don't necessarily want to share, hey, share away or, yeah. or ask away. 
Yeah. Um, I'm going to start with you, Garrett. I'm oh. going to ask you if there was one piece of advice that you are retailers, mm. what would it be? And you work part-time in retail. I do. Um, I work uh, very part-time at Stogie's on Grand when uh, Mark needs some coverage. And um, advice that I would give um, any shop owner would be to, you know, really listen to their clientele. And um, that it, seeing it from that, that end of it, there's, there's twofold. It's one thing for, you know, um, a guy to come in and say, hey, uh, I want you to carry this cigar. That's all great, but if there's truly not a market for it, um, that's not going to last long on the shelves. And I think the big part of that is a relationship with uh, the staff and the owners, and the tobacconists at, at the shop. Um, so I think my advice is, is kind of twofold. Listen to your customers, but also start building those relationships mm -hmm. with uh, your clientele. Yeah, And that will help dictate uh, products to, you know, to bring in and to try and, and, um, and you start trusting, trusting that. So, yeah. Joe Guzman wants to know what's, what's the answer to last week's question on the horses. I don't remember a horse. Qu Are you talking Not about horses? It's the it, llamas. It was camels. It was, it was oh, camels. It's camels. camels. Yeah. Uh, and I actually did research that oh. this week. You're such a nerd. What was the, what, what did you come up with in your research? Was I right? Mm-mm. See, you Sorry. can't, you can, well, you can't trust anything on the internet. That's true. And I know that because Abraham Lincoln said so. So I looked at multiple sources. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln totally said that, by he the way. He did. He did. Uh, the, the number one country, if we want to roll this one again, uh, maybe you guys t took a, a look and peeked, but anyone want to give another stab at the country with the number one camel population so we said at least the source i found said australia right and had the highest camel population in the world but apparently that's number according seven. to your fake news source <laughs> <laughs> hashtag fake news right. apparently that's not correct that is not correct so is it okay so australia is a country you would never think of mm -hmm. um is the country that truly has the highest camel population is it one that people would be expecting so it's also not one. Okay. Um, camels, camels, camels. Um, is it the United States? No. Is it? You're shaking your head already. I'm shaking my head at oh, Big it... Bear and Pickle. Okay. So Big Bear says India. Is it India? No. Uh, Pickle says Russia. Is it Russia? Mm-mm. I'm going to guess just because it's such a massive country. Is it China? Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> Austra Tubbs. You said Australia was number seven? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Tubbs said China too. Yeah, um, that's wrong. But it's a country you wouldn't think of. Correct. Um, and, and I should say it wouldn't surprise you, but it's just one of those that doesn't jump out at you as, oh, when I think of this country, country i think of camels um i will tell you this it's, that and it's not middle eastern it's not saudi arabia mm -mm. um you think of political unrest north africa it is in north africa it's north, not egypt northeast africa it's not egypt mm -mm. uh somalia yes is it really somalia yes, it is yeah, and uh, Big Pickle, you were close. So Somalia has the most camels, yeah. uh, has the highest camel population of any any country in the any world. country in the world. That's because it's it's not a big country. It's not, and it's not even even as small a, as it is landmass. It's not very densely populated either. Yeah. So yeah, that's crazy. Now, hey guys, so I did I did uh, digging on. Uh, Wednesday the next day because I was interested to know. Um, fact check me, and um, 
let me know if if you uh, find the same info I found. Yeah, because I remember Ronnie was all over that. He was. He was like, "That's bullshit. That's bullshit. There's yeah. no way it's, it's I just Australia." Lost so much respect for you guys. So I was like, "Dude, it's just camels. <laughs> Chill, man. We're just we're just trying to sell couches. It's just nerd talk about camels." Yeah. Um. So um. So that's my that's my advice for okay going back to to that piece. Uh, that's my advice for shop owners. Um, what would be your advice for, um, for the, uh, for the new smoker, for the new smoker? Um, well, oh shoot. I mean, we sort of (laughs) talked about it on one of our really early episodes, but my number one piece of advice for the, the new cigar smoker is, is, uh, find a um find two things right away find a local tobacconist brick and mortar shop that has a really personable and um um you know easy to talk to um owner or people who work there in the in the humidor mm. um they don't and the, they don't have to be experts but they have to be just as willing to learn as you are. And I have a moth the size of my thumb on my laptop screen. So I'm going to get rid of him. Um, they, they don't have to be experts, but they have to be willing, just as willing to learn as you are. And, um, they'll help, help you, you know, go into, to there. And once you know, you've got the right, uh, brick and mortar shop, go in there once a week, and grab a handful of cigars and say, help me pick out. I want to try five new ones this week. Help me pick out five cigars. And um, in the middle of doing that, go around and on online to different cigar media websites, including how about that cigar.com find out, out about cigars that are getting, you know, maybe some decent scores, or maybe there's a lot of press about them or things like that. Um, and go into these shops and say, Hey, do you have these? find what you can and and purchase those and get recommendations from the people who work in the shop and grab a handful of cigars every week and try them. And you also, at the same time, as much as I want to support brick and mortar shops, I think online purchasing is still extremely important, you know, as far as, you know, staying budget minded and making the most out of your cigar budget dollar every month. And also find some online cigar retailers who have good prices, uh, fast shipping and, uh, integrity, meaning they're actually going to ship you what they sell you. Cause sometimes you'll buy from an online retailer and you just don't know what you're going to get in the mail. Yeah. So, you know, find a place and you know, we can recommend some places, uh, if you want, but, um, that's what I would say for the consumer is try as many different cigars as you can. Um, if you're new to it and you haven't built up any kind of tolerance for, for richness or boldness or, or full bodiedness or strength in a cigar, work your way up to it. Um, and in, in the midst of working your way up to it, try a lot of different things. Try, try different brands, try cigars from different countries, try cigars with different types of wrapper leaves and try different sizes of cigars. Um, and, and, and just get as much variety in that as you can. Um, and that'll help you develop, uh, into the, and, and learn, what it is that you prefer and you'll go as you go through your cigar journey, you're going to go through phases. You'll go through phases where you, I only want to smoke strong cigars. You go through phases where I only want to smoke mild cigars. Mm. I only want to smoke Mm. Connecticut broadleaf wrappers. I only want to smoke Sumatra wrappers. I don't, you know, back and forth. Um, And that's okay because it's the same, it's the same thing with foods. You'll go on a kick where, Oh, I only want to eat, I've been eating tacos like for two straight weeks. I just can't get enough, you know, going around to different taco places uh, or, or Asian food or whatever it is. Yep. So that's the biggest thing for consumers. And I saw a good, a couple good comments. Uh, Pickle said, you know, samplers. Yeah. Um, that was huge for me, uh, back in the day, uh, developing my palate, you know, was, uh, buying samplers online. Um, you can also go into your local, brick and mortar and ask them for a sampler. Hey, would you mind putting together a sampler for me? Yeah. And any it, good brick and mortar shop should say no problem. Yeah. 
Yeah. If what's anybody your, says and no. And they'll say, what's your budget? <laughs> well, How yeah. much, what do you want to spend total? Exactly. And they will custom yeah. um, that sampler for you. So uh, samplers are great, both online and local shops. Chuck's got a great comment too. He says, keep a journal. I uh, put it up on the screen oh, here for those man. of you guys watching. Keep a journal because it's confusing to the newbie. Chuck, that is a great, Fantastic. great point. That is some, I don't do it anymore. Um, well, I, I do, but it's more on my phone. Um, I, but I used to, years. I used to have um, a notepad um, that was old school, literally a pen and paper uh, with a bunch of little sheets in it. And I would keep notes on pretty much everything. Uh, and for a while I, I didn't do it for long, but for a while I would, take the bands and tape them on the page guzman oh did guzman say that yeah um i used to tape them on the page but i kind of i quit doing that just because i was lazy so yeah i stopped doing it too but i've got i've got this drawer in uh my little smoking area that is just filled with bands that yeah. someday i want to make a table i i said the same i used to save my bands and i've more and more lately i still do have some bags somewhere filled with bands um but i've it was about a year ago i just stopped saving them yeah um because mainly it was when we moved here you know because my wife and i moved here and i had all this stuff and i'm, I'm not going to save these because i had little piles <laughs> all over the place <laughs> in different yeah. areas where i would smoke and i'd have little piles and i'd have loose ones in my you know in my travel humidor and and in my four travel humidors i'd have different bands and it's like i i just couldn't keep track of keeping those anymore um I, and i do have a bunch in bags like i said that maybe someday i'll do something with mm -hmm. but i just really fell away from that Another thing I would add to that too for the for the new smoker is um, find a community. If if you are at all a social kind of person, or even if you're not, um, I encourage you to find a local cigar group. They are all over the country. We've got a fantastic one here in Minnesota called MHC Minnesota Herf Connection. Uh, MHC what? Uh, big presence on Facebook and just a lot of people giving each other shit. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of love and a lot of great things happening in that group. And in that group, not only do you find community, but you also find a lot of great information about cigars. The thing that I found is um, I can be snobby about my cigars, but I'm not snobby about anybody else's smoking preference. I'm quietly judging you. No, I, I like, I'm joking. Because I like Cinco Five. Yeah, single. You like five five. Yep. Um, going back to the um, retailer question, and this is something that we talked about on one of our early shows, which is um, the uh, when you go into a cigar shop and the retailer or the person who works there that's helping you navigate the humidor, the question that they always ask the at the at the brick and mortar shop is um what do you like to smoke and i said that's the wrong question mm -hmm. and uh, this is a big shout out so every friday the minnesota herf connection has a friday herf and we we go to different shops around the twin cities area and this past friday for the first time we had our friday herf uh at a place called sodi's uh and it's in sort of this if you're in minnesota it's sort of in the stillwater oak park heights area and I had already met him when they, they had a really tiny little location before. And now they've got a second location that's a lot bigger. And and um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But I got there and he didn't recognize me because I had only been, you know, I had only met him once before for I was in the shop for all of five minutes because uh, I had my family with, with me waiting in the car. But I got in the humidor and I walked through there and I said, um, hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. I'm, you know, here for the you know, the MHC herf and, and we walk in the humidor. He said, what are you in the mood to smoke? And I looked at him and I, with this big smile and I said, that's the right question. And I said, thank you so much for asking that question because, and he got this, you know, he's just a great dude. He got this big smile on his face and, and he said, Oh, I, I'm glad I did good. So, um, you know, if you're in this area, go to that shop because not only do they have, um, they have a pretty good selection. I mean, um, backwoods they have yeah backwoods and no they they do seriously have a, a legit selection I, yep I've... um and uh they've they've got a lot of pipe selection pipe tobacco 
Uh, but they also, this is the coolest part, is in the lounge. The lounge is actually separate. The smoking lounge is separate. So you walk in the retail area, and they've got the point of sale, and they've got some of the pipe stuff, and they've got the restrooms and all that. Then they've got the walk-in humidor separate. And then on the other side, they've got the lounge completely closed off. And the ventilation system in the lounge is very high quality. That's one of the biggest things you you should have at a at a brick and mortar shop is good air quality. Absolutely. And they have it at Sodi's. Good. So shout out to Sodi's. It's a great uh, great well, place. In winter and winter is really the the time that you get to see that totally sink or swim yeah. on that. So yeah, looking forward to uh, visiting. And I have yet to go. Some of the guys brought up. Uh, uh, v herfs, so virtual herfs. There, yeah. you know, there's like Google Hangouts and Skype and some other uh, things out there. Even Facebook, you know, you can do uh, um, uh, Facebook videos and things like that. You know, just get together. If, if you can't get together in person, you know, find some people. And it's kind of honestly, it's kind of weird and awkward at first. You get online with somebody, and you're, you know, you've got different people chiming in here and there and you're like hey how's it going oh good how's it going with you okay see you later yeah, who's you know, the dungeon master yeah it's kind of awkward at first but you know you 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 get past that and then the next thing you know it's just you know a bunch of people sitting around smoking cigars talking about the cigars and talking about life and kids and jobs and all that stuff and and after a while honestly you sort of forget that it's you know through a a screen on a smartphone you just forget about all that yeah um, so for you, Garrett, mm. what's the update on your, uh, on the cigar that I gave you? Um, if I didn't have things that I, I need to look up and, and, and do, I would be eating this cigar. It is so delicious. Um, I don't know what you gave me here, brother, but, uh, I got an idea what the wrapper is. Okay. Um, and I just know that you don't have dog rockets, so I don't have to worry about that. So oh, I have I have a ton of dog rockets. Okay. Well I have I have I have probably in in my personal stash of cigars, I probably have at last count it was somewhere in the neighborhood of twelve hundred. And I have I have plenty of dog rockets. And, and dog rockets are, you know, one guy's dog rocket is another guy's, you know, top shelfer. But right. You know, I have cigars for when I'm uh, mowing the grass or working on the car or cleaning the garage or walking the dog that they still taste pretty good. But if I drop it, I don't care. Um, or when people come over who have never tried a cigar before and to be completely honest, I'll give them something that I know burns well and tastes good. And that is a potential good cigar to, help them understand uh, at least start to understand the flavors of smoking a hand rolled premium cigar. Mm -hmm. But if they take four puffs off of it and set it down and don't touch it again, I'm not going to get pissed off because it was 30 bucks. Right. So I've got plenty of those. Um, I don't smoke them very often uh, because I prefer to smoke the good stuff, but um, m stuff that I like, a, a lot of stuff that I say, oh, I only like to smoke the good stuff. Well, a lot of guys would look at what I consider to be good stuff and say, you smoke dog shit. Well, okay. I mean, that's your opinion. That's cool. I, I respect that. Um, but, you know, that's uh, there's a lot of stuff I like to smoke that other people may not. Guzman hopes it's a Don Diego. <laughs> well, I I can't say what kind of cigar it is that I gave you. It's All I know is I'm in love. Are you? I am. Okay. Well, this the, this one you gave me is very good. Um, I have had to relight it. The, it. There's some combustion issues with it. Is it really? Um, but you know, it's I I don't care. I've never been one that really gave a crap unless I have to relight it literally every three quarters of an inch. I just usually don't give a shit. Yeah. I don't care <clears throat> if I have to relight it. So be it. You know, I talk a lot, so um, I have to relight cigars pretty frequently anyway. I do too, pickle. I absolutely yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Real pickle, talk. Pickle says Monty White's. A lot of people shit on Monty White's. Um, There's a reason why Monty White is um, is a big seller. Yeah, it's a perennial bestseller. Any humidor. Yeah. It's a great cigar. Yeah, it if, really is. If you like a mild 
straightforward, old school, mild Connecticut cigar. Yep. Monty White Ashton cabinet. Yeah. We need to stop shitting on people for yeah uh, for cigars like that because um, there's a reason why those cigars are you know a uh, a cornerstone for so many retailers. Yeah. Now, are there old school are there old school style Connecticut shade wrap cigars that are that are blended to be mild that are maybe more small batch or whatever than Monty White's or or Macanudo Hyde Parks? Of course there are. Yeah. And they're great cigars too. Yep. But I there was a guy when I I worked a few times, not very many times, but I worked a few times uh at uh one of the cigar shops here in town to, you know, I got to know the owner and I covered for him when he had to be on vacation or whatever. And there was a guy who came into the shop every week on the same day at the same time and bought a box of Monty White Toros. And he smoked through it during that was his cigar. He, that's all he smoked. He smoked through it during the week and he came back the next Tuesday or Thursday or whatever it was and bought another box. That was his routine. That's the cigar he loved. And I have no problem with that whatsoever. Would I think uh, he'd, his life would be a little more interesting if he branched out a little bit. Sure. But what the hell am I, who, yep. who the hell am I to say, Hey, right. you should really smoke something else because you know, you're limiting yourself. Yeah. He's limiting himself, but let him enjoy his cigar. That's his cigar. And, uh, and I'll tell you, um, there's another cigar that, um, I think I see more people as, uh, more people smoke this particular cigar as their only cigar um and it's one that i smoke i don't know maybe a couple times a year but i should really smoke it more because again it's a pillar of uh the industry it was a huge explosion in the 90s and responsible you know for part of why we have cigar culture today um excalibur oh yeah the yeah, Excalibur, the Hoyo, the Hoyo, Hoyo de Monterey Excalibur, totally. Um, I see so many people coming in um, and buying boxes, bundles, or handfuls of that cigar, and it is a fantastic, and fantastic. That, it's cigar. a big beginner cigar too. It is huge because yeah. a lot of those, you know, if you see those those the you know, the biggest online retailers, you know, they'll sell the samplers. You know, it's some kit that comes with a little desktop humidor and maybe 10 cigars and a little, you know, uh, maybe a, you know, a crappy lighter or something Sure, for 30 bucks or whatever it is. Yep. You know, they, they put those deals together to try to gain a customer base, you know, get new customers in the door. I understand why they do that. But in almost every one of those kits that you can buy from Thompson or CI or name another company, mm -hmm. it's got, one of those beginner cigars out of that 10 or 12 that come in the humidor is an Excalibur. Yeah. Almost without fail. Yep. Um, and it's, you know, I'm not going to crap on that cigar. Do I have any in my humidor? I don't think I do. Uh, I don't but think I do am either. I going to crap all over it? Nope, I'm not. Because people buy it and smoke it every day and enjoy it. Yep. And there are people who work their asses off uh, in Dominican Republic and or Nicaragua to roll that cigar on a regular basis. You know, another cigar that I used to smoke um, quite a bit, and I just don't see it anymore, mostly because my online um, purchasing has seriously gone down, but Grey Cliff. Grey Cliff, well, for me, I, and I don't really know all the details behind Grey Cliff as a brand or where they're made or anything like that, but Bahamas. they were always, they were always hit or miss for me. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and I haven't, I haven't smoked any in a long time, but there were a couple of, here's the funny part with Grey Cliff, at least for me, and people can shit all over me if they want to for it. But nonetheless, when I was still just sort of a every occasional cigar smoker, it was actually the cheaper Grey Cliffs that I enjoyed. The, the Yellow Band? Yeah, whatever they were called. Either the and yellow they were or the cheap as dirt. They were cheap as dirt. And again, if I was working on my brakes and it fell in a puddle of, you know, brake fluid, 
I didn't care because it cost two bucks right. or a dollar fifty. Yeah. I didn't mm-hmm. care. Um, but they tasted just fine. Yep. And yep. they burned well. Yeah, they did. So mm-hmm. and they were probably short filler cigars, you know, those yellow labels or whatever, but I I didn't care. Yeah. I just haven't seen any in a long time. Yeah. Um, but I smoked maybe one or two of the so called high end, high dollar gray cliffs yep. and just they didn't really do anything I for agree. me. Because I thought, okay, so this cigar cost me 14 bucks. I can think of many other cigars that I'd rather spend $14 on or many other cigars I'd rather get two for seven Yeah, any day of the week. So um, what are some of these other? Uh, um, oh, yeah. De- Pickle's talking about the cabinets. Yeah, cabinets are definitely h- more high dollar than, That's you know, Monty White's. But Guzman, yep, Guzman nailed it. It's the G two, G two. Thank you. That's what it was. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, good call. And uh, thanks for tuning in, Guzzi. Have a good night, brother. Enjoy having you as always. Um. So, kind of turning the. So let's talk about briefly. Let's talk about legislative stuff because there's tons going on with the FDA and all this stuff. And um. This is something we're really going to go in depth with Jeff Borshowitz on when he's on the show on the 24th, mm-hmm. it, because he, I mean, he's in, he's in the thick of it. Um, you know, he works directly um, in this, um, at least part of what he does. He contributes a lot to the legislative side, but for us as consumers, you know, and we're going to ask him this too. Um, but for us as consumers, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people say, well, what can I do? You know, I'm just, I, I'm just a guy who, um, you know, smokes cigars. Let's say it's an occasional cigar smoker. It's not somebody who has, you know, uh, a big humidor with, you know, a couple hundred cigars in it. It's somebody who buys, you know, five cigars a week and smokes them during the week and that's it. So, so is, is there anything that that consumer can do? to benefit the fight against FDA overregulation. <clears throat> so anything that involves legislation, right? It m- many people don't feel the immediate um, you know, they don't get that immediate payoff of calling the representatives. However, that works even if you know your representative is against what you're calling for, just calling and, um, or a lot of times now you can email your representatives and um, all that voice matters. Yeah. You know, so calling your representatives and letting them know, Hey, this is uh, legislation that's coming up. It's important to me. And here's what I think. Yeah. And um, so that, you know, that's a simple, quick, you know, no cost to you other than time to, you know, make a call and leave a message either with, you know, their, uh, their people that they have answering the phones or a quick email. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, for me, I mean, I know there are a lot of, um, well, not a lot. There are a couple organizations out there. There's, uh, the CRA cigar rights of America. And then there's, I'm going to get this wrong. I don't know too much about this other organization. I, th- I think it's called the Cigar Smokers Alliance or something like that. And I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong. But there is another sort of consumer-based organization around um, um, cigar legislation. If anybody remembers it, please put it in the comments. Um, but you can join these organizations. There is a you know There is a membership fee or a sort of a donation amount to join these organizations. Um, you don't come away from that donation empty handed. The a CRA membership does come with some, uh, some cigars and, and a few other things. Uh, but you know, they, they do a lot to, um, lobby to lobby and to work with people like Senator Marco Rubio, who, Hey, lo- love or hate his politics in general. Marco Rubio is the champion in Washington on a federal on a federal level mm-hmm. um he he is in the thick of it all the time because i mean you think about him being you know from florida uh, the the florida cigar industry we're basically down to you know 
one tobacco farm and one cigar factory left in Florida. That's it. I mean, there used to be hundreds of tobacco or hundreds of cigar factories in Florida. Yep. And now there's one and there's one tobacco farm growing tobacco for premium cigars in Florida. And, um, you know, there's, there's so much history and, and depth and richness to this, to this culture that's been built throughout the last few hundred years in Florida. And honestly, it could all just go away. Yep. Uh, because it, it, at the end of the day, like it or not, it's a business. And if they can't, if it doesn't make financial sense for them to keep their doors open, then eventually, like it or not, it's going to disappear. So, you know, if you, if you, if that's something that you're interested in joining the CRA, you know, we, we don't really deal directly with them, but it, you know, the, the way the world works now, just go on Google and look up cigar rights of America and find, go and learn for yourself, go on Google and, and go to their website and learn about what that organization is, what they do and what it means to be a member of that organization and decide if that is something that's right for you. Um, if you care at all about the premium cigar industry, if you care at all about enjoying premium hand-rolled cigars with your friends and family, then I encourage you to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and going aside from that, here's my biggest thing when it comes to consumers and dealing with the legislative side and fighting over regulation and nonsense regulation, education that's the number one thing for me is if and it's not i'm not talking about educating the public because that comes after the fact what i'm talking about is us as cigar consumers and even even non-cigar nerds even consumers who are occasional cigar smokers whatever we can do as bloggers as cigar media as and as the cigar nerd community to educate because the fact is there are hundreds of thousands of regular cigar smokers who are casual part-time cigar smokers mm -hmm. who don't realize the impact that they're for lack of a better term, ignorance has on the industry. And that is, they don't, they don't know, they don't even know better. They smoke premium cigars, but they don't even really know better. The fact that yeah. what the product they enjoy is in a completely different solar system from cigarettes and vape and things like that. Yep. And so in encouraging education for cigar consumers even at the most casual level of cigar consumer to say to to teach them everything we can to say so that they know and they can go to their friends and family and, and when the 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 subjects and the conversations come up about tobacco you can say i understand what you think and what you feel and what you've read but at the end of the day the information you have is incorrect just because it's got the word tobacco in it doesn't mean it should be all lumped in with the same thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, give me two minutes of your time and I can give you the basic rundown on why premium cigar, pre premium hand rolled cigars are not a danger to kids. They are not um, in the same health risk category by any stretch of the imagination as cigarettes and th that kind of thing. And if, if we can get the vast majority of casual cigar consumers, to have even 10% more knowledge mm. will be a lot better off in the fight. Yep. And, you know, an interesting thing happened this weekend. Um, my in-laws have a cabin in uh, Northern Wisconsin <clears throat> was able to spend a beautiful weekend up there, uh, bringing in the docks this weekend, uh, kind of closing up the, the dock situation, uh, putting the boats up on shore, doing all that stuff getting ready for fall um but we have neighbors um up there at the cabin who we have a great relationship with and i was sitting with my kids and their kids uh, around a bonfire and we're chatting we're talking and and they know that you know i'm a cigar smoker and 
we were talking about it and they said, yeah, I think, you know, I heard something on the news about, you know, uh, cigars. And, you know, I just said a little bit, you know, that, um, and, uh, in fact, uh, Becky, the, um, had said, um, she said, well, cigars aren't, um, they're not as processed as cigarettes. Right. And the lack of information for the general public in cigars is really quite minimal. And if you come at it, you know, and just, uh, talking with people who have absolutely no knowledge about it, you know, at the end of the conversation, they're like, I never even thought about it that way. I just always, you know, thought tobacco is tobacco. Yep. And, um, and it makes sense for a lot of people to just bulk all tobacco products in together. I get it. I totally understand that, but we have to break that stigma where yeah. premium cigars is a totally different product. It's a right. different culture. It is not catered to young people. Um, it's not advertised to young people right. and it's not a demographic that has, um, really been an issue in premium cigars. Right. So, um, having those conversations with, you know, other friends who are not in the, you know, in the cigar, um, uh, culture, you know, that's important too. Um, the more we inform and like Matt said, education, and it's got to start with us. Um, then that information can spread to others and yeah. that's, there's a lot of power in that. Yeah. A hundred percent. And that's, that's the best thing we can do is, you know, don't, and like we always, we, we say a lot, don't be a dick. You know, if, if somebody's, if somebody's dead set in their opinions and you try to give them, you try to kindly give them the correct information about it and they continue to just, you know, berate you about it, then it's, it's a conversation, not for you. Just, just say, we'll, we'll agree to disagree. And if you ever want to really sit down with me and actually discuss it and talk through it, I'd be happy to, but right now I'm just, I'm, I'm done arguing. Um, sometimes you just got to walk away from the conversation, but, um, yeah, educating consumers who are casual cigar smokers and us in the cigar community, like you said, those of us that are in the cigar culture, um, talking to our friends and family and continuing to spread the word that, look, this is a separate category and it should be treated as such when it comes to legislation. Yep. Period. End of sentence. And if we can make any headway with that, it's, it's going to really reduce the risk to, um, you know, some of the cigar history that's in the state of Florida, some of the cigar history that's in the state of Connecticut, in Virginia. And then you look at the Latin American countries where these cigars, the vast majority of these cigars are made, whether it's Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Honduras, Costa Rica, Cuba, so many thousands of families. Yep. They feed their children yeah. and they, they send their children to school and, and all this through, um, this, this premium hand rolled are, you know, artisanal products in, in a lot of cases, they're, they're farmers, they're factory workers. Yeah. And this is how they, this is how they feed themselves. This is how they feed their kids. So many of these factories now have schools and medical clinics right there on site so that people who work at the factories can send their kids to school and get medical attention. They have busing, things like that. And if uh, there's so many of these clueless lawmakers out there that they're, and they're willfully blind to this, they actually, they, they deliberately turn away from the truth just because it's expedient and it's, and it's easy for them to just say, no, I'm not going to discuss this with you. It's got the word tobacco in it. We're done talking about it. We're going to lump it all together. And because of that, they are putting a lot of people at risk and it's, it's, it's pointless. There's no need to lump this all together. So, uh, if you're a cigar consumer, do all you can to educate yourself about the products that you enjoy, do all that you can to educate um, your friends and family who are not tobacco users and let them know that this is, look, this is, this is a completely different product than cigarettes. It's not a risk. And here's why. And like Garrett said, 
even though it may seem fruitless, it may seem pointless, write to and call your legislators mm -hmm. at the state level, at the district level, even at the local level, because the it, what happens is it ripples. You a, a pebble goes in a pond and it ripples out. So the pebble goes in the pond and that pond is your local municipality. All of a sudden they say, oh, you can't smoke in the park. Oh, you yeah. can't smoke in, you know, you can't smoke walking down the sidewalk. Outdoor patio. You can't smoke on outdoor patios. You can't smoke in your car. Yeah. There are some places where you can't even smoke in your own home. In yeah. the United States of America, there are places where you cannot even smoke inside your own home. Yeah. If you have children uh, now in the state of Illinois, it's illegal for you to smoke any tobacco product if you have a child in the car or in your home. Even if you have a completely, if you have a smoking lounge in your own house that is completely separate, sealed off and, and on its own dedicated ventilation system, you can go to jail for smoking in your dedicated cigar lounge Yeah, in some places. It's yep. bonkers. Uh, big bear. I want to give you a big thank you and shout out um, as uh, the twins beat Boston with a score of six to five. Nice. Uh, great, you know, end of season win as they continue to just forge ahead. So um, that's Thanks huge. For that. yep. Thank you for that. Thanks um, for the update. It's a good win against Boston. Boston's a good team. Yep. And uh, we got to keep gaining ground on Cleveland. And those, I mean, those wins are, are continued confidence for the team as they uh, head to the playoffs. Yeah. So, um, let's give a quick update on the cigars we're smoking and uh, then we'll do useless fact and numero de los muertos yep. and then finish off and reveal what we're smoking. Awesome. So right now I'm so again, I, I'm relighting it partially because I do think it has some combustion issues. It's not bad, uh, but also because I'm talking a lot. So I have to keep um, I have to keep relighting it, um, but it's it's consistent. There's it, it's starting to sort of pull back and and there's a little bit of sour there's a little bit of leather but it's it's still it's still very good i think part of that sourness is coming from the fact that i'm relighting it so there's a little more carbon build up sure. but overall i i'm still very happy with it i'm still i hope i'm not wrong but i'm pretty well convinced that i know what the wrap relief is uh but we'll find out in a few minutes um what about you <clears throat> I have a pretty good idea of what the wrapper is as well. The flavors, um, again, I can't put my finger. I can't give a, a, a distinct flavor. It's it, um, it's just delicious. Um, it's really oily. Uh, there's a lot of foot smoke on this one. Um, the construction and performance has been great. Um, it, it is just on the side of tight for draw which is perfect for me i love a little bit of resistance um and yeah i'm absolutely loving it nice um so useless fact of the week um brought to you by me um since we don't have any sponsors yet hey if you guys are looking to uh get some more uh get the most out of your sponsorship dollar give me a call send me an email we can help yeah. you out with that. Um, so useless fact of the week. Tell me if you can guess, and I want you uh, you guys watching and listening also to uh, put your guesses up in the comments. What was the first, and no cheating on Google, what was the first CD printed, oh. released in the United States? The first commercially printed major label release CD music CD released in the U S hmm. so think about when CDs became, I'm going to go early eighties and I'm going to go <clears throat> for some reason, tougher than leather keeps uh, popping into my head. What was Run DMC. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tougher than leather. Um, that's uh, that's a guess I'm gonna throw out. I'm also gonna throw out. Um, uh, 
Um, I'm going to also go Metallica, Kill 'Em All. Um, I think Kill 'Em All was 86. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So that that's might, a little late. I think it was 86. Yeah, that's a little late. Maybe uh, Master of Puppets. Big Bear says Thriller. Michael Jackson's Thriller. That's Ooh. a good guess. It's a good guess. It's I would go actually Off the Wall. Off the Wall was 79, I think, or 80. Yeah. Um, One of my first tapes I ever bought, by the way. So I'll say, um, I'll give you a hint. Um, it's a... Um, it's not a band, but it's a single artist, which single artist always has a band, but nonetheless, it's a single artist. Um, white and uh, rock and roll. <clears throat> so there's some big hints. Um, First CD ever printed and released major market in the United States. Paul McCartney? Not Paul McCartney. Um, George Michael. No, because he was with Wham before he went solo. Was Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, single artist, white guy, rock. <clears throat> Um, are we talking like 82, 83? Gordy guesses Elvis. Unfortunately, no. Elv <laughs> Elvis died in 77. And uh, CDs were, uh, although I think CDs were in the experimental phase I in the late so, 70s. Yeah. Late but, 70s is when. But they weren't released into any kind of major markets at all until, um, until the 80s. Um, we have a winner. Shoot, the boss. Big Bear, Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA. The boss, That was the really? first, that was, Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA, was the first major market release printed on compact disc um, in the United States. So, Big Bear. Um, I have, I have a prize for you. I don't know, I have some stuff on hand to give away. So, Big Bear, I'm going to give you a prize. What? Um, for, uh, for that guess. Well done. Uh, so yeah, born in the USA. So do you have a oh, numero, numero de, de los muertos? muertos. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, all right, uh, we've got Minnesota trivia oh. on on the brain here. Okay, so I'll take it. Um, we got a Twins win, so let's do some Minnesota. Absolutely. Trivia. So the the number is an average of twelve hundred in Minnesota. Um, so every year, about 44,000 people die in Minnesota every year. Okay. Okay. Of those, 1,200 die from this. Okay. Um, the number is 4,400. Mm -mm. Sorry. The number... 1,200. 1,200. Sorry. So about 44,000. 44,000 people die in the state of Minnesota every year. And of those 44,000, 1,200 die from this. Yes. So the number is 1,200. Um, 1,200. State of Minnesota. So I'm thinking about things that are Minnesota related. Yeah, I wouldn't go there. No? No. Okay, because I was, I was going to say like um, boating deaths or, or right. ice fishing. Yeah, and those would all um, get lumped into. So I was looking through all the things, and those would all get lumped into accidental. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't directly, Accidents. you wouldn't categorize this as um, a specifically Minnesota related cause Correct. of death. Okay. Yeah. So it's not, it's not choking on lutefisk. No. <laughs> no, nope. or you know, falling in a taconite mine. Or, okay. Okay. You know, um, the. Uh, the interesting part is this particular statistic is relatively high nationwide. Um, no other state has the number that we have. No. Okay. Um, are most of these deaths caused by criminal activity? No, no. Okay. 
So it's not murders or Mm -mm. something like that. Um, All right. Um, Guys, if you've got guesses, put them in the comments. I'm thinking here. So not caused by illegal activity. 1,200 people in the state of Minnesota die from this every year. Um, Does it involve vehicles? It does not. It does not involve vehicles. Are these deaths that commonly, most commonly occur in the home? Yes. Uh, is it caused by, uh, is it, um, um, <laughs> <laughs> Gordy, Gordy's got a great freeze to death. Yeah. Um, there probably are quite a few of those, unfortunately, in Minnesota, but. That's not that's, this. That's not it. No. Um. Although in a few months we're gonna be, mm-hmm. we're gonna be we're wishing gonna be wishing for this this weather right now. Um. Is it uh, suicide? No, sir. So yeah, Big Bear said suicide. That sadly that number seems low. I have a feeling the number of suicides in Minnesota it is, is higher, higher than, than that. Twelve hundred every year. Yep. Um. I went a little less morbid than that. Uh, is it drownings? It is not drownings. Not drownings. Uh, is it related? Is it electrocutions? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So, but they it commonly occurs in the home. It commonly occurs in the home. Um, is it asphyxia- asphyxiation from like a gas leak or carbon monoxide buildup or something? Huh. Um, that's actually I'm getting warmer. You are getting very, very warm. So, um, uh, Noah, that is not correct. Um, the, uh, hmm, you've, so your answer is part of the answer. Okay. So asphyxiation it's not asphyxiation i can't say that word right now um the latter part of your guess um carbon monoxide poisoning so that's part of the statistic i have dead air because i'm thinking so hard yeah, that's all right. Um, not listening to Trenda talk about cigars. Listening. To- <laughs> oh, Chuck's got a good guess. I think that might. That is also part. That's also part of it. So yep. radon, Chuck guesses radon. That's part of it. Yep. So. So what what would be that category? Um, What would be that category? Um, They consider this to be. I'm just going to throw it out there. Yeah, go for it. Accidental poisoning. Accidental poisoning. So so whether it's ingesting ingesting something, something or radon or carbon monoxide by accident or like, you know, a kid getting a hold of toilet cleaner mm-hmm. or something and Bleach drinking it. Or, yep. So accidental okay, state of Minnesota. Twelve hundred people? Twelve hundred people a year die from accidental poisoning. Holy which cow. includes radon, carbon monoxide, wow, and ingestion. So hey, that you know, make sure your house That's is, a big number. Make sure your house is properly ventilated and lock your shit up. Yeah. You know, your chemicals and all that. Lock it up. So there you go. Twelve hundred. Stay safe in Minnesota and everywhere. Um, so Let's uh, let's finish out. Let's do a final reveal, and then we'll uh, we'll try to pull up some notable smokables. Um, so let's do the let's do the final reveal. You who's who's going to go first? All right, I think I've got a. Um, I think the wrapper on this is Sumatra. Um, and that's all I got. Okay. Um, the rapper is not Sumatra. Is it Broadleaf? No. Okay, I'm way off. This clue will probably give it away as far as what the cigar is. The rapper is stock cut Habano. Hmm. 
I feel like I should play the Jeopardy music right now. Stock Cut Habano. Stock Cut Habano. Anybody out there have a guess? It's a cigar. It's a it's a dark, toothy, oily cigar. And the wrapper is Stock Cut Habano. Very popular cigar in uh, major markets, including the Twin Cities area of Minnesota. Stock Cut Habano. <clears throat> Nicaraguan? Yes. The cigar is made in Nicaragua. As far as the origin, the country of origin of the wrapper itself, I confess I don't know for certain, but uh, they're made in Nicaragua. Um, um, I got... I got nothing. I'm really. Is it a my? Is it a my father? It is not a my father. The band is in my hand. I'm gonna grab my band too. Um, Should I reveal it to the camera? Yeah. I'm not looking. Is it a? We have a correct guess already. Damn it. Big Bear hits it on the head again. Liga. Liga Pravada T52. Stock Cut Habano. Uh, I don't know the rest of the details behind the blend off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, that's the Corona Gorda size of the um, Liga Pravada T52 from Drew Estate. So, Well, I knew it was bomb shit. Yeah. It's yeah. Damn good. Now this one. As I take a few more puffs. Um, so it's been great smoke output the whole way. I've had to relight it a bunch um, for a few different reasons. But um, it started out with tons of uh, sweetness and a little bit of, you know, stuff that, you know, sort of reminds you of like, uh, roasted pecans, you know, that kind of, that kind of sense on your nose, like roasted pecans, little hints of like, maybe a little bit of like walking into a saddle shop, like leather, yeah. stuff like that. I am fairly certain that, um, and I'm going to guess the same as you. I'm fairly certain that this wrapper is Sumatra. <laughs> it's not. No. God. Is it Cameroon? No. Okay. So I'm a, I'm a jerk. We, uh, we both got, uh, schooled by the Habano. This is Habano. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and look at the difference. Yeah. And that just goes to show. Yeah. I mean, way in, in, uh, the fermentation process and the everything. Yeah. So, um, so it's a Habano wrapper. Nicaraguan at, Puro. Nicaraguan Puro. Uh, it had a pigtail cap. It's a Corona Gorda size. Uh, it was sort of a medium brown color. Um, um, Nicaraguan Puro made and also rolled in Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. um, um, major market company, I assume. Yep. Uh, Any guesses? Is it a Hoya de Nicaragua product? It is not. Not a Hoya de, de Nicaragua product. Um, can you tell me anything else about the blend? If you can't, that's okay. I really can't. Um, all right, let's reveal the band to the world. Red Knight. Not a Red Knight. Oh, is that the Espinosa anniversary? Yep. Espinosa 20th anniversary. I fail so hard. There it is. Espin oh, no focus. Espinosa 20th anniversary. Um, great cigar. Um, again, some combustion issues, but that's probably due to 
the high humidity and me never shutting up. Uh, yeah, very good cigar. Um, that was you. fun. Thank you for that. That's a lot of fun. And you guys should do that sometimes. Get together with some of your friends, take some bands off some cigars, you know, number them and pass them around. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And get it um, super wrong like we yeah, did. Get it super wrong just like <laughs> we did. Um, and rethink your life choices. We both um, guessed a Habano as Sumatra. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, it's a little sad. I'll get over it. <laughs> yeah, I will too. I, I have my excuse. I still you stand do. by my excuse cone. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that uh, that's my eighth cigar Number of the eight. day. Um, but I know that excuse cone. It, the excuse cone doesn't play. So, um, so coming up, um, just some some show notes coming up. Uh, again, Jeff Borshowitz was supposed to be on tonight. He will be on the twenty fourth of September. Um, and next week. Uh, a week from tonight on September 10th. This is going to be huge. I'm so excited for this. We are going to speak to Mr. Steve Saka. Saka. From Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. And um, one of the things that I'm hoping to kind of pick his brain about is a little bit of what we were talking about tonight is, you know, there's so much to know about tobacco. And there's this article that he wrote for Cigar Magazine a long time ago that Skip Martin sent to me mm. uh and it's it's basically like a, a it's sort of a, a primer course on tobacco prime or tobacco varietals and different types of tobacco and it gives details on the seed varietal and fermentation processes and things like that and as cigar nerds we love all that stuff but there's we know that somewhere in between there's a sweet spot for everyday cigar consumers to know you know just the right of right amount of information so that we can put uh the truth out there in the public uh and um appreciate and know more about the products that we enjoy mm -hmm. and that's what i really hope to get from uh, steve is you know the we want to dive into the cigar nerd stuff but also break it down into the bare essentials that the cigar consumer needs to know to be better informed and also if we can better inform the public at large maybe that will help you know uh you know pull back the reins a little bit on some of this over regulation nonsense yep um so that's coming up uh one week from tonight on september 10th uh and as i pull up my calendar here um sorry about that um then on the 24th uh like i said that is the reschedule for uh having mr jeff borshowitz on the show uh and then on september 17th um we are going to have um and i'm going to mispronounce his name because everybody mispronounces his name uh the cigar hustler himself from the cigar hustlers podcast mr mike stepan kebich i think is how you say his name uh but he um he's a retailer uh cigar hustlers he, uh, they do a podcast uh and he also um owns the brand uh, Postania cigars, uh, which are made at Nica Sueño, uh, Skip Martin and um, Esteban Dislas factory in Nicaragua. So we're going to get to know him, get to know how he got into retail, how he got into podcasting and how he got into his brand. So that's on September 17th. Uh, and then we have more stuff, more stuff uh, that we're working on getting scheduled after that. Uh, so, you know, continue to check back, um, watching us on Facebook, listening to us on the podcast and checking us out on the website um uh shout out quickly to um uh, robert holt who we in interviewed a few weeks ago um we took the time to uh really sit down and do an in-depth interview of uh interview in-depth review of the uh the southern draw kudzu lustrum lustrum and both garrett and i loved it and it it ended up being the the highest score yet on how about that cigar.com. Yeah. Um, and if you can find the cigar, please do. It's a brilliant, brilliant blend. So good. Uh, and that Medio Tiempo is, I mean, it's, it's just a really phenomenal cigar. So if you can get your hands on it, please do uh, get that cigar because it's, it's really a nice one. Um, uh, in October, we've got uh, Robert Caldwell uh, working on a couple dates for, uh, for him so yeah, some really cool things coming up in the pipeline. Um, 
And then uh, just today, fresh new content on HowAboutThatCigar.com. I posted my review of... Um, doggone it. What did I post a review of today? I'm drawing a blank. Such a moron. I got the email. I didn't... Um, uh, my brain is just falling apart because there's so much going on right now. Um, what was the new review today on uh, on HowAboutThatCigar.com? It was oh the uh, the Placencia, uh, oh yeah, uh, Alma del Fuego. Um, if you it's brand new on the market, and Placencia has been putting out, you know, they've been growing tobacco and producing cigars for other companies for years, and you know, starting uh, three four years ago, they started putting their own name on some brands, Placencia eighteen sixty five, and um, they had Alma uh, Fuerte, and then Alma del Campo, and then uh, now the Alma del Fuego. And it's just, they're, they're definitely a pricier cigar, but great flavor and just really, really good. So, uh, that review went up today. Um, I recommend that you find that cigar and pick up a fiver of it because it's, um, definitely something you want to keep, uh, in your rotation. Um, again, again, higher price point, but mm -hmm. really good cigar. So, uh, track that one down if you can. Um, I've got just a few, uh, notable smokables. Um, I smoked again I, when I was at Sodi's. I grabbed one of the uh, the warped um, La Comena, uh, the the Unico. Oh yeah, with the, the nice one with the the Lonsdale with the pigtail. Mm -hmm. Yummy, um, really good cigar. Uh, again, I've enjoyed it since since it was released. So that was a good one. Awesome. I had the uh, the new Rose of Sharon um desert rose desert rose yeah that was uh that was my uh cigar on the boat before we brought in uh the dock in the boat and yeah gosh darn it it's a great connecticut shade cigar man really sweet and so mellow. sweet and smooth yeah and gotta do it yeah legit cigar uh, i said legit again um I should get fined every time I say legit. Um, we'll get a legit jar. The other one I had um, also at Sodi's, um, and I grabbed a couple of these because I want to review it for the website, the uh, uh, the Alec Bradley Project 40, mm. um, which I had heard about and never smoked. Uh, the, uh, the experimental series, Project 40 from Alec Bradley. Um, so uh, I won't I won't give it away, but I thought it was pretty good. Um, so I'll be reviewing that one soon, uh, as well. Cause yeah, I thought I was kind of surprised by it. Hey, and then another one that I smoked this weekend that, you know, um, we sell a lot of locally. Um, but it just, it never seems ceases to amaze me. The, um, uh, Rocky Patel decade. Yeah. Uh, 92. Yeah. And that's a great cigar and i haven't had one in a long time i hadn't either and i had picked one up and i had thrown it in and i've had it for maybe six months or so and it's another one of those you know uh cigars you don't think to yeah to grab yeah but like we talk about those examples of cigars that are maybe have been on the market for a long time and maybe fallen out of favor yeah you know with cigar nerds yep but it's good to go back and revisit those from time to time yep so that was my blast from the past cigar and uh treated me very well nice uh so thanks again guys for watching tonight uh hanging out with us asking questions um thanks to jeff borshowitz everybody who is in florida right now you know uh we wish you the best and um you know we hope you can make it through it with as little um you know, as little damage as possible. Uh, for those of you who are, you know, continuing to go up the coast there, uh, just be safe and really uh, yep. just listen to your officials. You know, if they say get out, please get out. You know, don't don't hang around um, because chances are higher that if they say get out, they, they probably mean it. There's probably bad stuff coming your way. So just be safe and be aware um, and you know, uh, get off of, uh, Instagram and pay attention to the news. So you actually know what's going on around you, um, and be as safe as you can. Um, like we said, a lot of stuff coming up, 
and great content coming up. We're excited, so excited for some of this, you know, um, some of the people we've been able to interview already mm -hmm. and the people we get to interview coming up soon in the future. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Please remember to uh, like, share and uh, comment, you know, appreciate the, all the comments that you guys continue to bring us every week. We are, you know, blown away each week by uh, the following that we continue to, to grab and, um, it's just awesome. Yeah. So thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah, we really appreciate it. So until we talk to you next time, burn cigars, not bridges. Take care, guys. Thank you.